All right, so we're gonna do some simple diag here today on my uh, boat that I've got, um, gauges, all that stuff. What we're trying to do is we're gonna figure out why it's not running. Simple things, okay, first thing to check is a lot of these boats have a safety switch. So make sure your safety switch is in. Okay, put you know, put the key in, turn it on, and usually if you crank it, crank it, it would start. But this one, not start. So we're gonna do simple diag here. We have no start, so I've already gone through and checked some stuff, but I'm gonna go through what I did and show you how I did it. Okay, what I figured out with this thing is I have issues with the carburetors. I already have spark, I have all the other things, but let me explain how I got to that thing, got to that conclusion. Um, the fuel tank might have water in it, I'm not really sure. I know the boat's been sitting for a while. I did take a little sample, I checked the sample, didn't seem to have any water in it, but the fuel st still might be bad. So the best thing to do there in that case is to try running it on an auxiliary tank. What you could do is you could figure out where the fuel comes in. Let me get some light here, get some more light. Uh, let's see if that's a little bit better. Okay, figure out where the fuel comes in. Fuel comes in here, you could disconnect this line here, run to a auxiliary tank and try running it. I'm gonna assume with this guy, it's probably a carburetor issue because I know the boat's been sitting for a long time. So for the 15 bucks per carburetor, I'm just gonna rebuild it because their kits are cheap. Um, might as well take it apart. I, I was told from the guy that I got the boat from that he was out running it and it had issues. Um, so the next thing you wanna check is, let's say you go through, you check fuel, fuel's good. Okay, do we have spark? Because you need fuel, spark, and compression. The engine cranking over, sounds like it has compression, but the best way to know for sure is pull your spark plugs out. Okay, pull your spark plugs out and check with the compression gauge. So, but let's check and make sure we got spark. So what helps when you're doing this is to one, either have somebody to turn the engine over while you're back here, or have a, you know one of the spark testers. If you don't have a spark tester, I'm gonna go over how to do it simple. Um, I don't have anybody to help me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I have one of these nice little push button things I use on my cars to turn them over and get it in the right spot, but it works on these guys too. Pull your boot back that comes from the main battery so you can connect up your jumper here to your to that lead. And you're gonna connect another jumper there. All right, once your jumpers are connected up, you know, you can make sure your key, key is on, my key's on. You could take your push button. So it turns over. Um, now, what you can do is my spark plugs, like I said, I already went through and tested some stuff. So you can take your spark plugs out, okay, pull them out. And yes, I know there's, I put oil in the cylinders because I know the engine was sitting for a while before I turned it over. Just as a precautionary, make sure the cylinders have some lubrication in them. But as you can see, these spark plugs are now oil fouled. Um, if you have oil fouled spark plugs like that, what I found to actually work is you can take um, some starting fluid that does not have um, lubricant in it, just plain old regular starting fluid, and use that to clean a oil fouled plug. So that way you can test with it and try running it. So especially if you have a lot of oil in your cylinders, they're gonna keep fouling until you get it blown out. Do, 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 do. Unscrew, unscrew, unscrew. Okay, so you can see all my plugs are oil fouled. None of these spark plugs would run it anyway. So that could be part of your issue if you can't get it running. If it's been winterized heavily, you do you can get oil fouled spark plugs that way. All right, so I wanna show you guys here what you can do. Take one of your spark plugs, you can put it in the boot. Okay, just grab the top boot, grab this, one of my spark plugs and just ground it out. And watch because you may shock yourself. <laughs> As you can see, you get spark. So that's how to check for a simple, easy way for spark if you don't have any tools. Um, so if you know you got spark on your cylinders, you got compression, all you're missing is fuel, it should run. So that's just a quick, easy way of troubleshooting it.
Okay, on this uh, Johnson 130, I decided I was going to pull the carburetors. You're going to need some basic tools. You're going to need two sockets. Okay, one one is a half inch, and the other one is a seven sixteenths. Yeah, you need half inch and seven sixteenths. So you got four on each carb stack. Each carb stack is two carburetors. You got two nuts, and you got two bolts. Okay, um, you're gonna. Have to on this one, I had to take off the left-hand side or driver side, well, driver side for, say, like in a car. Okay, I had to pull the nuts off and the bolts off so I could pull the carburetor loose so then I can get in there and get the other ones off, the inboard nuts on the other side. Okay, once you pull off all them, pull off the four, your carburetor comes loose. Um, then you could... I probably should have disconnected my fuel line first, but you got one fuel line right there to disconnect and you can pull off your carburetors to be able to go through and reseal them. And it looks like somebody's been into these before. I got one screw right there that is partially backed out. And that may have happened with vibration. Who knows? I, I, don't, I don't know what to think. So it looks like the other screws are stripped out a little bit so maybe the the previous owner of this that i got it from tried taking them apart couldn't get them apart who knows i got seal kits for them so i could take them apart and hopefully i can get out all the screws to get them apart but while you got it apart you can also take a look at your reeds on each cylinder just take a look with a light make sure none of your reeds are busted so if you got a broken reed in there it's going to cause issues. You're going to get popping and backfiring through your intake. So that's not going to work well. And take a look at other connections like that guy down there. Looks like it's a little bit loose. Needs to be pushed back on one of the uh, vent lines. So the other thing, this still has a VRO pump for the oil injection. I also ordered a fuel diaphragm kit for it. As you can see, if you pump it, you get fuel leaking out all over there. So I'm gonna to try to put a new diaphragm kit in this and hopefully that will fix it and I won't have to buy a new VRO pump. The pumps are quite expensive. If I gotta go that route, what I might end up doing, instead of running the oil injection for the VRO, I might just go with a um, regular fuel pump. You can look it up for a, I think an 88 or an 89, uh, 88 horsepower Johnson. They use the same fuel pump on all these smalls. Even though this is a 130 horse, the fuel pump will be the same. And it should mount right up to this VRO bracket. So that way you don't have to change bracketry or any of that stuff. 